Hello everyone, this is part 2 of session 21 of Pre-Socratics to Augustine, also called History of Philosophy 1. Today we are talking about Epicurean epistemology. Up to now we talked about the metaphysical side of atomism and about the idea that, at least in Aristotle's terminology, it is a kind of materialism. And today I want to talk about the epistemological and scientific side of this approach. Epicurus thinks, just to sort of give us a little bit of background, that we all tend to live in fear because we tend to be superstitious. We interpret the natural world as if it somehow sent us signs, as if, say, rain or a particularly harsh winter or clouds or thunder, as if divinity told us, you did wrong, you need to be punished, you need to repent. And because we interpret the world in this way, we are stressed out. We are somehow living in fear of what did I do wrong? Why is nature sending me all these signs? And Epicurus thinks that natural science is salvation. It really rescues us from this stressed out way of relating to the world. And that atomism, which may initially come across as the sort of really sober-minded, very scientific approach, is a kind of therapy. It is a kind of switch in how we relate to the world, such that we no longer need to be afraid when, say, a storm is approaching, because we no longer wonder whether maybe that is punishment for something that we did wrong. No, it is a storm. It is a weather phenomenon. And we need to study the world as much as we can, such that we relate to things as what they are, namely natural phenomena. And for that reason, a lot of what Epicurus puts forward is a kind of scientific methodology or epistemology. And the most basic distinction in this epistemology is one between the evident, and that is sense perceptions, and the non evident, and that is everything. That is not sense perceptible. Now, atoms and void are not sense perceptible. We cannot perceive atoms. No one has seen the void. And hence the question is, what would it be in the evident domain that supports the claim that there are atoms and void and that really, in fact, everything is atoms and void, everything in one way or another, consists of or is constituted by atoms and void. Now, I want to give you just two examples for the type of argument that Epicurus puts forward, and then your assignment is going to be to read carefully through the texts which are the assigned reading for today and ask yourself which sense perceptions does Epicurus think speak in favor of the claim that there are atoms, and which sense perceptions does he say speak in favor of the claim that there is the void? Now, just two proposals that he makes that are most fundamental in this respect. One is that he thinks that the sense perception that there are bodies supports the claim that there are minimal bodies, namely the atoms uncuttable, smallest bodies. So that is one thing to think about. Why is it that the sense perception that there are bodies supports the claim about something non-evident, namely that there are these atomic bodies, the minimal, uncuttable, smallest constituents of the world? And the claim that there was movement that is, or the observation, the sense perception that there was movement, Epicurus thinks, supports the inference to the claim about something non-evident, namely that there is the void. We sense perceptually can take it as a kind of data that, you know, this is how the world is, things are in motion. That he thinks we perceive with the senses. And that is presumably some kind of evidence for the claim that there is the void. Why would that be? The thought is that if everything was kind of as were solid, 
with atoms, then nothing could move anywhere and everything would be at rest or at standstill. Hence, we need to postulate this non evident thing, the void, because what we see with the senses is that there is movement and we need to take that as what he calls the criterion of truth. What we perceive with the senses supplies us with a kind of criterion or yardstick for what theoretical account of underlying reality can possibly be true. So the sense perceptions that there are bodies and that there is movement are in some sense the most fundamental sense perceptions for the claim that there are atoms and void. But for your assignment, I want you to more sort of in a more fine grained way go through the texts and collect those sense perceptions that, according to Epicurus, speak for the claim that there are atoms and void.